Hey, what's up everybody? This is Nick from New Cars. Today we are at Jesse's house and we're doing things to his car this time. What exactly are we doing to your car this time? We're gonna do the uh, Turbo Smart wastegate and we're gonna go ahead and put on the ethanol gauge, the content gauge. Yeah. You will have to get an adapter. This is a male adapter for your AN line to hook up to the fuel lines that are back here. Also, you're going to need this line here for your one of your other lines. We'll go over it. So we have all this and we have this. This is your internal wastegate actuated by Turbo Smart. This is gonna be fun. Uh, we have to set preload and stuff. This is all other ex other hardware. You have to accept preload for the actuated rod there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start tearing through this, but first let's show you what that ethanol content sensor should look like set up in my car. I have my sensor which is set up right there on the battery, on the side of the battery wall. And I have all my fuel lines ran all through back there. And of course, mine is gonna look a lot different than what his is because I actually have a stock fuel rail which is on top of there. That's 100% stock. Then coming around to the inside, I have my ethanol content gauge set up right here, right on uh, right next to the steering column, right next to my access port, so I can see pretty much everything from here. I just, you know, look here and then look over there and then look over there. Oh, move this out. Yeah. Aha! <laughs> I got your nose. 10 mil T30. That's not a T30. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's go with 15. This was the first time. Ha! 15. So you're doing the uh, windshield wiper um, alignment. Yeah, you just gotta wiggle it. So you just stick, stick your hand on the backhand side because it's gotta come off even. Okay. I don't know if Jesse wants to talk about it, but uh. <laughs> go ahead. What happened was, his motor decided to let go. It was not his fault. It wasn't a tuning issue. I don't think it was. I don't, yeah, it wasn't a tuning issue at all and uh, it just windowed the block, you know, through and through. Um, and uh, he had to take it for, for warranty. They warrantied it, so that was cool. But now we're finding things that are not put back where it's supposed to be. Go ahead and gently, put nicely, come up, that's out. And your cowl's gone. Please let go. There we go. I got it up. I got it. It is hot, but I got the intake out, completely out. It took me only like six minutes. And uh, after you get that out, you're gonna have to remove those two nuts right there. There's two of them. They got one right there. And then you have another on the other side, underneath this heat shield. You remove those nuts on the, for the heat shield and you can bend this out of the way so that way I can gain access to that actuator rod right there. And then, um, yeah, we gotta remove. We need to go to the store. So, we also discovered something. I know Jesse was pulling things out and uh... Ford didn't replace my nice NGKs. They put back uh, Ford Performance uh, plugs. Yeah, so we're gonna have to run to the store and go get those as well. There we go. Two copper nuts. Two. Two. Brass balls. Yes. Oh, what? See? I told you. The oh. bottom's not even done. Hey, wait. Hang on. Before I start pulling this off, I pulled off both nuts. There's one here, one here. There's supposed to be a third on the back, but I can literally pull this out. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. This is your heat shield. This is what you look, what's it look like when you're on the back. So you got one nut here, one nut here, and there's supposed to be a nut right there. And obviously there isn't one. That's your heat shield. I mean, all it's gonna do is really just protect your engine from, or your turbo from heating up to this side, which is where you have AC lines, radiator hoses, and all sorts of other fun things. So yeah, that, I mean, it makes my job easier again. So I only had to remove two nuts, but yeah. And only put back two nuts. There's your actuator rod we're gonna have to go get. There's a snap ring that's on the back. I'm gonna go get it. Take that off, take the two nuts off. That's on the back hand side, which you can see now, which is right there. After 35 to 45 long minutes of working, actuator's out. 
Got the snap ring that's on there. Uh, yeah, um, we had the uh, snap ring disappear on us in the depths of the engine bay somewhere. Okay, I got this preload set. When I was measuring, I was measuring from the plate, but I forgot the diaphragm continue or the uh, the rod continues past the plate there because the plate's not there on the Turbo Smart wastegate actuator. All you got to do is just go to the base of the wastegate actuator, measure it out to the center of the hole, and align it correctly. And as you can see, it's at five and five eighths of an inch. So that is the preload for their wastegate actuator. So fortunately, the RS comes with a tire pump already. We already have the actuator actually mounted up in there. All we need to do is extend the actuator rod into place. And uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna plug this in to the car. I'm gonna get a vacuum line, plug it into this side, and then we're gonna put a vacuum line on there. We're gonna extend the actuator rod. You see the rod there. Ready for this, this uh, vacuum action? Ready? Yep. Got it on? Got it on. Woo! All I did, literally, was touch the two ends together and push it together. And it extended the actuator rod. Let me show you. Vacuum line. Connects up to the top of the wastegate actuator. And uh, we extended it with the tire pump, as you saw. And look, it's on. Wasn't that like the easiest thing? I told you the, the, the install part is like the no, easiest that, part. That was so more simple, but uh, losing the clip, that sucked. That sucked. But we do have another snap ring. Just gotta get the snap ring on there, and then the wastegate actuator is pretty much done. All I gotta do is plumb up the vacuum line that you saw hanging on the side, put that back on, and the wastegate actuator install is done. We're tightening this down, and we're gonna use a German torque standard of good and tight. The wastegate actuator install is now completed. Got the heat shield back on with the two copper nuts. Got the wastegate actuator done up with its vacuum line to the wastegate actuator. Got the uh, snap ring on there, the new snap ring on there, and it's all good to go. Now we're moving on to the good bit. We're gonna do the ethanol content sensor. First on our list of things to do for the ethanol content sensor install is routing wires through a grommet on the back of the firewall, see that grommet in the corner? Right here. So I gotta pop the coat hanger through or underneath that grommet down below. It's gonna pop out over here in the passenger well. But to get this off, all you need to do is see these, ca these caps right here, or what looks to be caps. There's little tabs on both sides of it. You just squeeze it, pull down, comes right off. Same thing. Grab it, pull it, that's it. And that's how you can get to your kick panel under here. Just kind of pry it off, comes away. You have access to all of your fuses and wiring, so it's gonna pop out from underneath up there. We got the routing of this wire, which goes to your content gauge. You see that plug connects up to that plug right there. And routed this wire harness through that grommet back there. I'm gonna clean up that sheathing, so don't worry. Don't you worry about that. Pulled it through with a wire hanger. Pulled it through wire right here, which will connect up to the module, which is here. And then uh, power. So we're gonna use one of those fuses. We're gonna put one of the wires on the fuses, put it in there, and we shall have power. It'll turn off after 10 minutes, which that way it won't be draining so much power off of there. And uh, after that, we're gonna route the content gauge itself from there, route it through the kick panel, through here, and to the module. All right, progress update. I got the ethanol content sensor gauge wire routed up and above the, uh, looks like the tube frame up top underneath the dash. So I got it routed under there. So it goes through the kick panel. As we come in through this side, I got the wire tucked up and away over there and right underneath the steering column, brought it up and, I, and then uh, Jesse would like to have the gauge right where I have mine, which is gonna be like right there behind the steering wheel so it's not so intrusive into your view. I plugged in the box with the sensor wire from the engine bay all hooked up and then this is your grounding wire and power wire. So my the power, I hooked it up to this fuse box here. I put it on the 20. All I did was wrap it around the prong and I plugged it in 
and it's getting power right now and the ground which is up here I grounded it come around to this side this now has power the ethanol content gauge has power and now with that done I'm now I'm gonna run the fuel line I'm gonna go disconnect that so my box of tools I have this kit here we're gonna be using the blue one right here the light blue one what we're going to do right now is we're gonna separate this fuel line right here so this fuel line is gonna have to come off this you already have the the tool already in there the fuel removal tool that I showed you what you're gonna do is you're gonna push up into it to you hear it click there so it'll click just like that and all you're gonna do is you're gonna tug down on this side and it, it'll come away I got it to separate hold top one off and the bottom one stays there so what we are going to do here okay so that comes out after you use the blue one three eighths um, once that comes out what you're gonna do is you're gonna run this line this 180 line here see how it loops around this one is gonna go with that adapter that you saw here out of this box it goes on top of that right here and then the male adapter that you saw earlier this one is going up into the top hat this one here the AN lines you're using this AN fitting it's the clear one that comes in your kit I don't know what size it is but just know it's the clear one not the blue ones for the Focus RS you're using these ones to hook up to the fuel lines you're using your adapters that you purchased off of Amazon which is linked below now with everything plugged in I have the sensor plugged in the electric connector plugged in this line is running down this line is coming through and coming and hitting into this top hat right there you can see it now that top hat all right with everything hooked up together we're gonna come over here and we're gonna make sure that this gauge works and there we go check that out e12 all right quick review before we close up this kick panel so I have again a power wire to that fuse that 20 amp fuse right there I just wrapped around it on the one of the prongs all I did was zip tie these together to clean it up a bit this is your power so red is your power black is your ground the other connector on the top right there that you're seeing that's your ethanol content sensor which is routed through the top of that this bracket here goes over it and connects into it to the sensor which I just two-way taped it to the back of this plastic piece right here and then this line, of course, is your ethanol content sensor wire that's plugged up in there. This is all going to get tucked away like so behind the kick panel, and it should look like this. And there you go. Kick panel installed. And both kick panels, actually. And now you can't see the wires except for that one right there, which is the grounding wire. But you can't see anything else. It's great. So let's continue. That's it. That's all we had. That was the wastegate actuator, ethanol content sensor. That's good to go. Tunes on. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe so that way you don't miss anything and you can see us together hanging out, having fun, autocrossing, circuit, drag, whatever it may be. We'll see. And uh, yeah, this is Nick from U Cars. We will see you later.